In the last video, we looked at the structure of the program. And after writing the program, we could type in go build, press enter, and with that command, we created an executable file. Now, if you notice, hello.go, this file here, takes 81 bytes. However, this same 7 to 8 line program takes 2.08 megabytes. Now, that's a huge space. And it's a commonly asked question, why do Go binaries are large in size? This is because Go binaries include additional data. Unlike other binaries, Go binary includes the Go runtime, debugging information, dynamic type check, and so on. So, in layman's term, you pick this binary and you can run it anywhere you like and you won't need anything extra. You don't need to install a virtual machine. You don't need to install some dependency. So to get a better idea of that, look at Java virtual machine or how Java compiles its program. So say you want to write a Java program. Hello world. So when you write the program, after writing it, you feed it into the compiler. That is Java C. The compiler then produces Java bytecode. That is a dot class extension file. Now, you have this file and you're running it on your system. And of course, your system has installed JVM. If you want to send this file to a friend who uses Linux, in order to run the same file, he will first have to install JVM on his system. And then he can run this file on JVM. So that file, that dot class file will not directly be running on Linux. It will be running on virtual machine, which he installed for that specific platform that is Linux. Similarly, let's say you have another friend whom you want to share this program. He is on Windows. For him to be able to run this program, he will first have to install JVM for Windows and then he can run that file. When I say Go binaries have Go runtime, that means they don't need to install any JVM or binary. What you do is you compile an executable for a given platform and if we take this file here and just give it away to a friend, he can directly run it on his system. This is because Go binaries are translated directly to machine code. So you can directly execute it and the instructions can uh, start processing. So let's demonstrate that. So we have the executable file here for Windows. So we can tell the Go compiler what platform or architecture we want to compile the executable for. And we can do this with two environment variables. So if you type in go env and press enter, here you see go related environment variables. We are interested in two of these. Go arc, here it is set to md64, that is 64 bit. And the other one is goose or go os, go operating system, that is Windows right now. So let's clear the screen. So by telling the compiler, the requirement for our executable, we can create an executable for the specified system. So here I have Manjaro running, Manjaro Linux, that is an ARC based Linux distribution. So, okay, let's, let's create an executable and let's cross compile. That's what cross compiling means. You're writing a program on one system or one OS and architecture, but you can compile it for some other system. So let's do it now. So we have this file here. And here, this is the host machine and I'm on Windows. So to set environment variable on Windows, you use the command set. And then we want to set go OS equals Linux. We are saying we are setting the go OS environment variable to Linux. And we want to set go arc, that is go architecture to MD64. So with that, the executable file will be created for 64 bit Linux. Finally, we can type in go build and let's see what we get here in the folder. So earlier we had this executable file. This is for Windows. Let's press enter and see what we get. So this was the file created. Hello. And as you can tell by the difference of icon, this is not meant for Windows. Let's try and run this file on Linux. In order to do so, you can just drag this file here onto the Linux desktop. And so to run it, just type in dot slash hello. We don't have the permissions, so we can change that with this command chmod plus small x 
and the name of the file now we can run it and here we have hello world so what we did was we created a file here on windows that was the host operating system and we compiled it for linux 64 bit and then we took that executable file into the linux system and we tested that it ran now we can do this the other way around too so we can create a file here on linux and then we can compile it for windows so let's do that very quickly let's clear the screen and then we can create a file to do so let's create a new file so type in nano hello.go so let's create a hello world program package main func main and we need to just print a line so let's say hello windows this is from linux let's save it so the file is saved here now we need to create a new directory for building this file so first we need to rename this because if we create a new folder here with the name hello that will ask us to rename this file so let's rename this file so we don't lose it so here i'm just renaming it quickly and that got renamed now we can just say cancel and create the new folder again with the name hello okay so create it here so this is the file let's move this file into the folder this is the directory or the hello package open that up here and so now let's switch to the hello directory cd change directory to hello and here we can build the file by typing go build so it created a file now by default of course this was for linux so we can run it here with this command hello windows this is from linux now we need to compile this to run on windows platform we can do this by typing in the command env that is used to manage environment variable on linux platform and then we can type in go os that is go operating system let's maximize this so you can see env go os and we will set it to windows that is go operating system is windows and go arc that is the go architecture is set to amd64 so we are targeting a 64 bit windows system and then we can type in go build to create the file and press enter and here as you can see it created hello.exe so this is for windows as you can see from this cute icon here so we created a file to be executed on the windows platform so let's do that so let's first get this file to the host system here and so here we have the file on this folder we already have this file and this is a different file so let's rename it let's just call it hello old and so now we can have this file here move it here so if we want we can actually have the powershell here and just to verify things are working and this is no old file so here we can to execute the files we can type in dot slash hello and that gives us hello windows this is from linux and if we execute hello okay so tab does not complete here so dot slash hello old that gives us hello world so this hello old was the older file and this is the new file again so we verified that that was from linux so this was cross compiling we created the file on one system and then created the binary to be run on another system and we demonstrated that by creating a file a simple file rather from windows and compiling it for linux and then running it and then the other way around creating the file on linux and then compiling it for windows so we cross compiled binaries for different systems but that is a very specific situation and we don't need that always so let's get rid of these binaries here so let's clear the screen and then now if we type in go build and press enter this file does not have the extension .exe so this is executing for linux so we need to reset the environment variables so we can do that by typing it set go os 
equals and no values here and if you press enter and then similarly you do the same for go arc environment variable so by doing so we are resetting the go os and go arc environment variables so now if we run go build we are generating hello.exe that is for the host system so by default when you run go build the compiler checks what system you're running on and it creates the binary for that system also to check what distros you can build binaries for you can run this other command so that is go tool dist list so that command gives you the list of all systems and architecture that you can compile binaries from go so that was cross compiling thanks for watching